Hello, 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 everybody. Welcome to Monday Live with the Creativity Cave. I'm Dina Rico, and I'm so excited that you're here. Just got to grab myself some Stampin' Lips so we can get started. I hope that you guys had a wonderful weekend. I am um, finding it has been a dreary day today. But it was so beautiful this weekend here. It was really warm for November anyway. And lovely. And it is now pitch black. And I think it might be raining. Or it's supposed to rain or something. I don't know. So anyway, um, I was happy that we had a lovely weekend this summer or this weekend with the sun and the warm uh, temperatures because there's just nothing better than that when it's headed for our cold and dreary winter season. So anyway, wherever you are, I hope that you are doing well. It is Thanksgiving week this week here in the U.S. and I am excited. This is just such a much better year this year than last year. Um, so I'm very happy to be going into the holidays this year. Let's just say last year, I was a little less than festive feeling. And so I'm really excited about that. It's, um, it's going to be a lovely time together with my family. I'm so excited to be spending Thanksgiving with my sister and her family. And of course, my two children and my husband, <laughs> we're all going to be together. So I'm very happy about that. So I hope wherever you are, you are spending time with the people you want to be with. And I hope that your Thanksgiving is um, drama free. <laughs> um, I, uh, I'm getting, just getting the last final touches finished on our, um, on our first we turkey, then we stamp camp, which is happening this, or it's, um, the projects are being released on Black Friday. So I'm excited for you, uh, for everybody who's attending to see those. Um, I know everybody's been getting their kits and I've loved seeing all the feedback. It sounds like you guys just love them. I do have a couple of kits left that I can mail out tomorrow. If you need one, just drop me a message. Um, we have an online only or a uh, version with the bag. And uh, like I said, I've got a, just a few, I think I have three left of the bags. So um, we would love to have you be a part of the event. Everybody has been raving about all of the goodies. So yay. Um, so that's just wonderful. Uh, let's see. Um, I already, oh, Cheryl's already used your tote. That's awesome. I love hearing that. Um, I actually am going to pack mine up and use that for um, bringing some fun things with me this weekend on my on my Thanksgiving trip. So I'm really looking forward to that. And I love our projects. I think they're super fun. Just so that you know, they're not Christmas projects. They are all occasion cards that you can create with... Um, or for any any time of the year. There's a couple of more wintry themed ones, but they're not they're not like Christmas cards per se. They are um cards that you can all occasion cards like I said. And if you want um a little creative escape, maybe you need to get away from your family. Maybe you just need or have some downtime. Um, these are really perfect projects for such things. So anyway, um, I'm also really excited about the projects that I have for you today. We're going to do a really pretty watercolor card. I love watercoloring. I know you know this about me. Um, I'm also going to do a little, um, let's see, I've got, actually, I've got a couple of super easy cards. And then what is my last card? I can't even think. Oh, and then a fancy card. My last card is kind of fancy. So I'm excited for you to see those today. Um, ba, ba, ba. Let me see. What else do I need to tell you? Is there anything else? Uh, I just need to clean up because I, I was doing a little embossing before I turned the live on just so that I could save a little time later on. Because, you know. Um, but anyway. Uh, let's see. Do I have anything 
Anything fun to share with you this week? I think not. We had just such a lovely weekend not doing a whole lot, um, which was nice because we have a lot coming up and we have been doing a lot with, um, well, let's just say since the state meet, which was not even a month ago, I think it was three weeks ago, um, we have put twenty five over 2,500 miles. I think it was like almost 3,000 miles on our car. <laughs> so we've been um, driving a lot and um, we're going to put some more on the car this weekend. <sighs> so I kind of enjoyed that we didn't really go anywhere, except I have to tell you, I think I really maxed out my husband on peopling because I took him to Sam's Club on a Saturday afternoon. We needed to go. We were out and about, so it was just kind of the right time, but I think he really was kind of done with peopling by then. It was pretty busy at Sam's Club, as it often is on a Saturday afternoon, wherever. And um, he, let's just say, is not the most patient human being on the planet. I feel like I am, but he is not. So anyway, <laughs> um, it was kind of funny. Uh, I, I, oh, I know what I have to tell you guys. Okay. So I put on a pair of my pants last week. And I don't want to say they fell down, but they didn't stay up particularly well. I still apparently have enough of a butt left to hold things up, but not securely. <laughs> so long story short. I had to go grocery or I had to go shopping for pants and I did not want to um take I didn't want to like get a ton of new clothes because I feel like I hopefully this is just like a stop on my way but I went shopping for jeans this weekend and I will tell you there is nothing more humbling or honest than a pair of jeans <laughs> I mean, they really tell you what's what. <laughs> so I felt good that the jeans I was trying on were a smaller um, size than I've purchased in some time. But I also felt like the mirrors at in the changing room were, let's just say, mean. <laughs> I don't have a full-length mirror in my bedroom because I've not wanted a full-length mirror in my bedroom for a very long time, you know, like, or in my wherever. I, um, I didn't, I just didn't want to see the full picture, you know, for so long. And so I looked in the mirror in the changing room and I was like, well, that's just mean. Every bump was visible. I think you guys know what I'm talking about. But um, I did find a couple of things that worked. So that was nice. And I offered to bring my husband clothes shopping with me. But for some reason, he declined. <laughs> um, I think he was really done with the shopping <laughs> after our quick trip to Sam's Club. And it really was pretty quick. But anyway, I um, I did have a good... I mean, I, I'm excited about being able to fit into smaller clothes and all of that, but I just had to laugh at like, okay, I'm not going to get cocky. I know I still have a little ways to go and whoa. <laughs> but anyway, it was just kind of funny. Um, so I think we all as women can relate to that. There's there's nothing more honest. Actually, maybe maybe leggings could be a little more honest than jeans, but I think it's funny. So anyway, um, I hit, I hit over 40 pounds too. So that made me pretty excited. Um, and I, I think I've said before, I'm not sure what my goal is. I don't, I don't really have a goal per se. I mean, I don't know, but, um, I'm just happy that it's going well and I'm sticking with it. Um, I'm planning on totally cheating this weekend and then just getting right back on the, uh, horse on Monday, so, um, or maybe Sunday, <laughs> um, cause we're traveling and I think Thanksgiving dinner is approximately the best meal 
there is. So I will partake and I'm cooking. So, um, but anyway, it's a process. So, ah, jeans, I don't like jeans, but I feel better about wearing jeans. Um, I do still believe skinny jeans are an affront to humankind, but that's another topic. <laughs> um, anyway, so I am, I am looking forward to, um, to this weekend and I hope that you guys are too, where, wherever you are and whatever you're doing. <sighs> and, oh, I have to tell you, this is also cool. Carl's cooking dinner for us for the second time in a week. I just said to him, maybe you could clean last week the last meal you cooked off the stove before you cook this night's meal. He's not a clean cooker. I don't know why that is, but he's, well, okay, I know why it is because he's a teenage boy, but he leaves quite the trail. Oh my gosh. So anyway, um, but it should be interesting. He's making mac and cheese, so I'm not going to have any of that because I know the way he's going to make it is not lean, nor is it green. <laughs> but anyway, and thank you guys all so much for all the nice comments. I really appreciate it. It's, um, it's really sweet. And also, I'm hot. The funny thing is I have been getting cold easily, but I have this sweater on that's really warm, and so now I'm hot. Anyway, so, um, and here, the cool thing is I wouldn't like wearing just a t-shirt. Um, normally I would be like, oh. so anyway, that's nice. <laughs> All right. Uh, let's see. So today, uh, oh, I've got a few things, a few reminders. Um, so first off, uh, I've got a minute flip my camera around for you and um I'm gonna get started I'm gonna be cold here in a few minutes I just know it I'm hot right at the moment and I'm not going through any changes yet I always giggle whenever I'm with Kelly she has a hot flash and it's like and I can literally feel the heat coming off of her but um I'm not there yet so also can I tell you yesterday I was in my in the car when this happened and I did like this hard with my hand. I can't remember what I was doing. But my ring flew off in the car and that sort of gave me a heart attack. So both of my rings are a little bit loose and I think I need to look into that as well. Cuz I would be soul crushed if I lost one of my rings just saying. I know they're just things, but seriously. Um, Mary, was am I doing the same thing Kelly was doing? Yes. Uh, yep. Optavia is what I've been doing. So it worked for her and it is working for me. So um, I have to giggle because <laughs> I got to talk to my sister about it. She's five years older than me and she's not really ever commented on it. And, um, some of you know, I have a crazy story about my mother, so that topic has not ever been discussed with her either. And so I can't, um, I can't speak to how it is in my family or when it starts, but I'm at approximately the correct age for it, but we'll see. I don't know. So far, nothing. <laughs> Hopefully that will continue to be true, at least for the short term. All right, so I'm going to flip my camera. Okay, there we go. Oops, just get everything lined up. All right, so um, first we've got the first we turkey, then we stamp camp. That is happening. Um, you There's... Uh, if you would like to get registered, there's still plenty of time for that. You can. Um, if you get registered by tomorrow, I will, by the end of day tomorrow, I will ship your box before um, Thanksgiving. Otherwise, it will be after. Also, 
Um, I have what I believe to be kind of an awesome thing. I have two awesome things coming up, but anyway, I'll, we'll get to that in a second. Sorry. Uh, let me stick to this. So if you would like to get in on First We Turkey, Then We Stamp Camp, we would love to have you. Um, I think there's a link in the description of this video, but there is, if there isn't, just drop me a message, um, an email, or... Um, or like a Facebook message and I'll send you the link. I will also be sending out one last link um, tomorrow. I send out my newsletter typically every Tuesday and it will have some information on it, including the information on the 12 days of Christmas. This is uh, something I'm doing new this year. But last but not least, if you are a Stamp Happy Academy subscriber or a member of my team, you get $10 off first. We turkey, then we stamp. Okay. Now, I am doing something this year called the 12 Days of Christmas, and it's going to be quite an amazing event. I hope that you will join. Um, if you are subscribed to my email list, you will get all the information about this tomorrow, but this is going to be 12 Days of Christmas that starts on the 1st of December and runs for 12 days. There will be project tutorials every single day. I will also have some special events, like there will be, I think, two or three, I can't remember, I haven't, I haven't looked at the schedule since last week, uh, lives during the session, during the 12 days of Christmas, all kinds of fun stuff um, that I would love to have you join in on, and it will just be a lot of fun. So to get to be a part of this, all you need to do is be on my email list. And there is a link in the description of this video that you can join so that you are on it. Um, but it will be really wonderful, especially if you're a procrastinator. <laughs> Get, do you see what I did there? Yeah. Um, uh, it's just going to be a lot of fun. And not everything is Christmas per se. I mean, it's like there's Christmas cards. There's also like winter themed cards. There's also gift ideas. So maybe if you maybe don't celebrate Christmas or whatever, I think you will still be enjoy being a part of this just because I will have a lot of awesome stuff. We'll do some gift card holders, some tags, um, and some gift giving ideas with your crafting. So I hope you'll partake in that. Uh, we have two classes coming out this month, or I have two classes coming out this month. The Winter Owls class with my besties, Barb and Kelly. This is a phenomenal class, if I can just say. It's uh, all wintry cards, though if you wanted to make them into Christmas, you certainly could. Um, they're really pretty cards, and I really love the projects I came up with, I'm just saying. Anyway, um, this is available uh, from me, and you can also get a discount on this if you do the first we turkey, then we stamp camp. Um, I also have the Garden Meadow Creativity to Go kit, and I finalized the projects for this today. Oh my gosh, they're so fabulous. Um, I'm very excited about it, can you tell? We're going to make a project with this bundle, which I think you're going to love um, in our live today. And then uh, my All About Autumn All-Star Video Class PDF is available for free with a $50 purchase of supplies in my online store, or um, you can purchase it for $15, and I believe there's a link in the description of this video for that. And finally, don't forget to get registered for the uh, Sunshine and Creativity Delivered, the um, when you register during the month of November, you can get December's box, which is all about card layouts, making your stamping quicker and easier. And I also have a few of my winter kits left over. Um, the winter box is the one that is actually just shipped. If you're a, if you're a subscriber, it just went out today and it is, um, cards, for winter, you could, again, you could make them Christmas if you wanted, but they're not necessarily Christmas cards, or they're not Christmas cards, but you can make them Christmas cards, I guess is what I'm trying to say. Anywho, um, I have a few of these left, and the projects are stunning, and we're going to use, we're actually, we're going to do one of the <laughs> rejects. <laughs> um, this, by the way, this November box that I'm mentioning that I have a few left over of, 
um, was a really good box. There's a really amazing gift and there's also an extra card because I couldn't choose. And this is one more card that I just couldn't put in the box that we're going to do today. So anyway, if you are already getting that box, you'll hopefully appreciate this, this uh, week's box or pardon me, this month's box. Gosh, sorry. I'm struggling with words today. All right. So our first card is going to feature the Christmas Classics bundle. Oh, I just love this one. It's the set that's featured on the cover of our mini catalog. It's such a beautiful set. Um, and I really love the sentiments in here. Oh, but it, I'm totally lying. This is not the set I'm using. <laughs> I'm sorry. I do really like this one, though. It's part of the suite I should say, and it, I think it is featured on the cover as well, but this is actually the set we're going to use, The Joy of Noel. My my bad. Sorry. I had I pulled both of them out because I wasn't sure if I was going to use both of them or just the one, so anywho. Um, so we're going to do a little bit of watercoloring on this card. I'm going to start with a piece of, um, or a half a sheet, I should say, of Lost Lagoon. And Lost Lagoon is uh, kind of an unexpected color for Christmas, I think, or the holidays, but it pairs so nicely. So we're going to also use, whoops, we're also going to use a piece of a four by five and a quarter inch um, Pretty Peacock. And then I've got a three and seven eighths by five and an eighth inch piece of Lost Lagoon that we're going to do our stamping on. Now, I mentioned that I was doing a little embossing before I hopped on the live today. So I'm going to, um, I stamped and embossed this in silver on some watercolor paper. And so we've got two images here from the stamp set and we're gonna color these in with our water painters. Oh, that's what I forgot. Here, hold on one second. I gotta grab something really quick. Okay, sorry about that. I needed to grab my glass of water. <laughs> you guys are gonna laugh. So I hit the restroom before I popped on live because sometimes you really gotta go by the end of the live, I'm just saying. And um, and so I thought, okay, good. And then I looked at the counter in there like I needed something, but I couldn't place what it was. So, I mean, I'm losing my mind. And I wasn't sure if my water painter had water in it or not, because you never know. And long story short, I had to go run and grab some, but here we are. <laughs> okay, so I'm going to use, I think, a lovely combination of Pretty Peacock, Lost Lagoon, and Berry Burst to do my watercoloring. So I'm going to squeeze the ink to my lids of my ink pads. If you struggle doing the squeezing, um, just pick up the ink onto, your, onto a block and just touch your block to the pad and then pick up the color that way. It, it's fine. It doesn't matter. Okay. So um, whenever I watercolor, I'm going to start with kind of my light colors first, and then we'll build from there. So I'm going to um, just going to kind of brush this on and I'm going to go out of the lines. That's not a problem for me. Uh, partly because I like to fill out all the areas. Okay, so I'm just going to go on all my leaves here pretty lightly with my last lagoon and then we're going to come back in and kind of build up some more color on here. You could add a green color to this too. I'm not going to use that on this, um, but you could if you wanted something a little bit more true to, you know, Christmassy colors. So I know holly is maybe more of a garden green color or shaded spruce color. You could use those colors with the berry burst and that would be really pretty too. But man, that berry burst is so pretty. But I kind of like doing non-traditional colors for stuff. I just think it's fun. Oh. Okay, so now I just have a light layer on all these. I may even put a light layer of Last de Lagoon on the branches of this thing. Just again, so there's a little color when we die cut it. Okay, 
Now I'm going to come back and add a little darker color of Lost Lagoon on the leafy leaves, if that makes sense. So I'm just putting some darker color in the center, like on the veins of the leaf. So pretty. Okay. Also, for those of you who love watercoloring, I'm already working on Watercolor Stamp Camp 2024 super excited <laughs> okay uh, oops just dripped some water on there no worries because that's how we roll today all right I'm going to add some um, this is pretty peacock I'm putting the pretty peacock on the centers of my holly leaves okay now some of these have dried a little bit and that's okay what I'm gonna do is take just a clean wet brush and kind of blend those colors out a little bit and on this it's kind of a sketchy design not like it's sketchy in the bad part of the stamping town it's sketchy as in the style of the image I'm you're welcome for that clarification by the way and so I'm just going to kind of blend that out a little bit and it really this one is such a good messy watercoloring type card I I love that look. Got a little bit more right there. Okay, now when um, the other thing I love, whenever I watercolor on an embossed image, the embossing just does such a good job of kind of keeping everything in its place, which is so pretty. And just going to blend a little bit more. Watercoloring is so forgiving. That's my favorite part about all of it. Okay, so there we go so far. Now, I think this looks really beautiful, but we're going to take it up a notch or two, I think, when we add the berries, because it's just going to be so such a beautiful look. Okay, so here we go. Now, you can be a little careful. I'm just going to go off on the side here to see how strong my color is. Okay, and I definitely want the stronger color, but it's okay if I've got the lighter color because I can always add more to it. I'm, on the berries next to the leaf, I want to be a little careful because I want to minimize the bleeding that happens there. You don't want too much bleeding um, into the leaf because, I don't know, sometimes that's not the look we're going for. And then we'll do these. And again, I can go outside the lines. I don't care. That's not a problem. Okay, and then let's kind of come back. So I can see the first ones I did are really dark. And then the second ones I did are pretty light because, you know, as the color goes, is used in your water painter, they kind of lighten up. So I'm just going to add a little touch a darker color to these and then they just kind of blend together so now I've got lighter and darker areas on here which is exactly what I want and then I can literally kind of remove color I'll show you this close up so you can see I can remove the color from these with my wet brush so I'm just gonna do my clean brush and kind of sweep away that color cleaning out the ink from my brush each time. That's why I love having that rag right there because it just is so good. Um, paper towels work really well for that as well. And then aren't these just such pretty colors together? That berry with the kind of Lost Lagoon. Oh, so pretty. Okay, so I'm pretty happy with the look of that. So we're going to take and um, run this through my die cutting machine with my dies. All right. Uh, you do want to make sure it's dry, which I'll be honest, mine is not. But we're going to run with it. <laughs> we're playing fast and loose with the success of this card, but it's going to be okay. I'm just looking for my post-its. I do like putting post-its on here, especially after I've done all the efforts of both watercoloring and um, 
heat embossing such things. That'll hold it in place. And then, oh, that's right. I have two, two images on here. I'm, although I might need to run them through separately. We'll see if the style fit because they are a little bit close. I had to try to avoid, there's some, I don't know, from the last, this is a scrap, and the last thing I cut out of it <laughs> left a mark. I don't, or I don't know, whatever. It's a used piece. Okay. Oh, so beautiful. And so is that. Okay. Next up, I also, before we got started, um, heat embossed the Noel in some silver. And I wanted to cut that out, but I wanted to stick it on some foam adhesive sheets so that I can um, have my letters pop up. Okay, so I'm putting that on a piece of foam adhesive sheet, and then I'm gonna cut the two together with the die, and we'll run that through as well. So let me just quick run that through. And I just launched all kinds of stuff off my desk. That's pretty typical for me. Okay, so now I have the Noel and it cuts through all of it, which is just glorious. Okay, so let's go ahead and um, put our card together. I'm gonna close up these ink pads so there's not a situation. <laughs> And we're going to start with the, oh my gosh, too late. <laughs> Let me just clean my finger off. Oh, oh, Lordy. Ever have a day like that? Look it, I'm going to take some of my little wet wipes that I got <laughs> and clean this off. Whoa. There we go. All right, crisis averted. I didn't get any ink on stuff that wasn't supposed to get on my car, just my desk, but that's kind of typical. Okay, all right, so I've got this on here and I wanna add it to my card kind of like this. And then I wanna put my Noel across the bottom, but I want to make this Kind of a more full arrangement so to speak so i'm going to take that same big stamp and we're going to stamp this a couple times in the background okay so i'm just going to kind of swing it out either way so there's one and two and then of course where it's overlapping in the middle we'll cover that up so that's no big deal like that so pretty Okay, and obviously we're popping this up. I mean, I think you all knew that was coming. Um, so I'm going to put several dimensionals on here. Like so. Because it's so pretty. Oh, I need one more right there. That's a big empty hole. That's just saying, put a dimensional on me. All right. There we go. So we've got that on there like so. And then um, we've got our Noel. So um, I'm going to take the Noel out and stick that on going across the bottom. My sticky didn't it come with? There we go. N O E L. I'm 
just going to kind of arrange this so it's roughly centered. I think we're pretty good there, so I'll stick the E down. Okay. And, oh, I just love this, those foam adhesive strips for something like that. Um, like these letters, because they do just such a lovely job of adhering to our card. And isn't that pretty? Okay, now I'm going to adhere these two pieces together with some seal. And then I want to combine these together. So <clears throat> I'm going to take some of this silver um, sheer ribbon. And honestly, I haven't tried what I'm about to do yet. So we're going to do two options. So I'm going to just tie a bow here. in my silver ribbon and we will have this ready to go right there. But I wanted to try and see um, if we could color it because wouldn't it be really pretty if it was colored with some um, berry burst ink. Okay, I'm going to try the light first because you just never know. So I have no idea how this ribbon takes berry burst ink or if it's even worth it. It may not be worth it because it's so sheer, but it's worth a try. So I'm doing the light berry burst marker and you can really do either. And I'm gonna need a little more. <laughs> and then you guys can tell me which one you like best, but just wait to vote until I put it on. Okay, so there's my berry burst color on here, and we'll see. I might like the silver best, but you never know. But we're gonna we're gonna get the full effect. So I'm gonna adhere that to my card base. I was gonna pop this layer up, but I think it's okay I'm directly on. We've got everything else popped up. All right. So do we want the berry ribbon or the white ribbon? I'm kind of thinking white. I'm gonna, uh, I'm gonna trim this just a bit. What do you guys think? Okay. Berry, berry, white, 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 berry, berry, <laughs> berry. Gosh, I thought the white was going to have it, but now the berry's coming in the lead. Keep Make sure you vote. I love when you guys vote on cards while we're live. Okay, so there's the white, and here's the berry. There's the white. What about Pretty Peacock Blended Ribbon? Well, I suppose that's a possibility, but I think these are our choices. I kind of like the white. I think I'm going to go with the white. Um, I do love when you guys vote, though, even though I'm not going with what I think the majority is at this point. I think the white is a little prettier. Classier. Fancier. I do like the berry, and I agree it pops more. 
but I think this is what I'm going to go with. Okay, so I'm going to put this on. And then I will have to find a use for my berry ribbon. Oh, whoops, we should put the glue dot facing the cardstock though. <laughs> All right, so there we go. That's on there. And of course we need to embellish. Um, I'm thinking, ooh, we could use some festive pearls. These are really pretty, and these are probably technically greenish, but I think they'll kind of blend with our um, background of Lost Lagoon just fine. And we'll add a subtle yet beautiful touch. So I'm just going to sprinkle a few of these around. somewhere. There we go. Isn't that pretty? Now, we're not done yet. On the inside of our card, we're going to add, um, so we've got Noel on here, and then I think I'm going to do Making Spirits Bright on the inside. And I'm going to ink this up in my last lagoon and then I'm gonna take my finger you can take a wet wipe or something else and I wiped off that ink and then I'm gonna use my berry burst marker and I'm gonna color spirits with that because I think that'll be really pretty to have that one word a different color Okay, of course I got a huff on it. So there's that, it's so pretty. Um, and if you ever wonder why I don't like using markers on here, gosh, is this even gonna work? Yes, it will. It's just because it does not come out as good when a mar you use a marker, it's better, but not as good as I like it to be. Okay, so we have this other piece that we did, and then I also die cut this little piney branch, and so we're gonna add these to um, the bottom of our card here. And you know what, I feel like we need just a little strip of color on here as well. So this is my scrap. So I'm just gonna cut a three quarter inch strip and add this to the bottom. Let's see, oh, <laughs> couldn't find my adhesive. It's just right there in front. Okay, normally I like to use designer series paper, but in this case, we're just gonna use this and where are all my scissors? I have like four pairs of scissors, three of which are on my table right now, but not the pair I want. Oh, here it is. Okay. So then I'm just going to tuck this on here like so. So pretty. And that goes on the inside. So I hope you liked this card. Oh, I just think it's so pretty, 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 pretty. You know, I'm a sucker for the, um, for the watercolor. So there you go. So obviously this is a more special card. This is probably one I wouldn't make a hundred of because that would take some time, but, um, maybe for somebody special on your Christmas list or to go with a special Christmas gift, this would be a really nice card to create. Um, I have done quick cards with this set too. So, you know, lots of, lots of possibilities with this one. I just love that Noel so much too. Okay. 
So that was our first card. Um, let's take take it easy and do an easy card for our second card. Let me just get rid of all the stuff I've got out here. Okay, so for our second card, we're going to use, um, by the way, I used the marker, Stampin' Write marker, and these were the blends for the ribbon marker for the stamp, just so we're clear on that. Um, you could probably use a marker on the ribbon, but you would need to make sure it dries. I would just be worried that it would kind of, it would rub off on your hands. That's why I use the blends, just FYI. So I actually, I would stick to using the blends for that. Okay. Um, next up, we're going to do an easy card. This one features You Warm My Heart. Now this is one of the sets uh, we're using in our Turkey Stamp Camp. But the brilliance of the Turkey Stamp Camp is that, uh, or I'm sorry, Warmest Heart. The brilliance is that of course this was designed to be easy to substitute for really any any stamps, you don't have to have the set we're using, but I will say I like this little set. It's pretty fun. And it's a really great all occasion kind of card. Of course, this thermos, I can't remember where I told this story, but um, this reminds me of a thermos that we had when I was a kid. Um, it was one of those glass insides. And um, I, I'll never forget this. We were on a camping trip and my mom made us tang. Do you guys remember Tang, the drink? And she made it up in the thermos that we had like that with the glass inside. And I remember being so excited because that was such a huge treat to have Tang, right? We, I mean, it was like drink water or milk as a kid. Well, we're on this camping trip drinking our super awesome Tang and I dropped the thermos. <laughs> and I think we all know what happened. It shattered with Tang in it. So not only did we lose the rest of the Tang, and I'm pretty sure my sister was mad at me about it, but we shattered the thermos, which I'm sure my mom and dad had for like a million years. So, yeah. Oh, but it just brings back <laughs> good memories, that stamp set. So I don't know. I thought you guys would get a kick out of that. I don't know if you have a memory with that kind of thermos. Um, yeah, it was expensive and it was such a special treat, right? And I think we got it because, you know, we were camping and we couldn't like go to the bathroom for a week <laughs> somewhere that wasn't a log. <laughs> You're welcome for that visual. Anyway, so that's my memory with this. Okay, so I'm going to start with a thick basic white card base, which I have folded in half. And then I have three strips of cardstock that are uh, one and a half by three and three quarters. And we're going to take and stamp on each of these with an image from this set. So I'm going to do um, petal pink. On the petal pink one, I'm going to do the sunshine, which I realize it's petal pink, but I don't care. It's my card. I can make the sunshine petal pink if I want to. Also, I really wish we still had um, uh, So Saffron because I really loved that color and that would have rocked this card, but Petal Pink will do. It's fine. I just love this little happy sunshine. It's so sweet. Um, so I just stamped those. Then on this one, I'm going to do Pool Party and I'll do the little rainbow with clouds. And kind of point those in all different directions. There we go. And then over here, I'm going to do flowers in Calypso Coral on the Calypso Coral cardstock. Okay, here we go. All right, 
So this is just such a quick, easy card. All right. I'm going to adhere these three to my card base. Or I'm going to try to adhere these three to my card base. <laughs> so what I like to do is put the first and last panel on and then kind of center this in between. But I think I'm going to scooch these in because that's a pretty big gap. I remember my sample was a little bit more, but I still like the centering portion because that helped me position where to put everything so that it looked nice. And sometimes I have to straighten things out just a hair because, man, you put that first one on crooked and then everything's crooked. You could also put these deliberately on, on crooked, too. That is not a problem. But that's nice a thing about seal too, is it? It's, there's a little bit of leeway in terms of getting things adhered to your card. Okay, now I have my typical leftover half inch piece of basic white cardstock. This is leftover from trimming layers of cardstock and I'm going to stamp You Make My Heart, or You Warm My Heart, sorry. And so I'm gonna stamp Remember how we did, I'm gonna do two colors on my words, but remember how we did it with the marker on the last one and it bugged me because it didn't come out great? Well, we're gonna do it with the ink pads here. Of course, the beauty of our see-through stamps is that we can, oops, we can see where we're putting things. So I'm gonna stamp this over here. Oh, sorry, my hand is moving things. Okay, so you warm my heart like that. And then I have punched a heart with my little heart punch in some vellum. And I'm going to put that right over the top like that on here. Okay. So I want to pop this up. And what's really fantastic about vellum is when you put it on white cardstock, it the adhesive does not show through. So we'll just kind of center that on here like so. And then I'm just gonna put a little bit of adhesive and add my heart over the top like that. And see, you can't see the adhesive. That reminds me of a Christmas uh, vacation. Can't see their line, Russ. <laughs> That's one of my husband's favorite lines from that movie. Okay. Then I'm gonna tie some linen thread on here and we're going to tie the ribbon or the bow part over the center of that heart. So cute. Okay. There we go. Oh, lovely. And then I'm going to embellish this. Ooh, I had, do I still have? I was gonna say, on my desk I had some iridescent rhinestones. Yep, I still do. And I thought we could just put some rhinestones on here. And I'm gonna put a couple of them right there. So cute. Isn't that adorable? So easy. Oh, I just love that it's just easy peasy. Oh my gosh, I love this. I'm just reading 
Kathy said her husband still has the thermos with the glass inside. I bought him filled with chicken noodle soup when he was in college. That's awesome. Joy remembers going sledding. Oh yeah, hot chocolate for sure. We definitely had hot chocolate in that same one. Of course, until I broke it. <laughs> so anyway, isn't that cute? Just so easy. Such a fun little card. And just love the little, I love the little images in this stamp set. They're so cute. So, of course, last week we made a really cute thermos uh, card in our live. And this week we are making a not thermos card with the thermos set. So, I don't know. Okay. All right, next up, um, ooh, we're gonna do our we're gonna do our complicated card, and then we'll kind of end on a simpler one. All right, just gotta move my move my stuff around. All right, so over here, get rid of that punch the stamp set. All right. So our next card, um, like I said, is this one is kind of a fancy card. <laughs> this features the garden meadow, which of course is um, my creativity to go kit. And you are not going to be disappointed in this class. So such beautiful cards. And they're both simple yet really great cards. I don't know what the else the word is. So this is, um, this is one of, this is, well, this is an extra card. Well, this is not in the class, I should say, but because this one's kind of, how do I say, fancy. A little more, a little more is happening in this one. Okay, so I'm going to start by finding my bone folder. <laughs> Uh, I've got a Highland Heather card base, okay, and then I also have a five and a quarter by eight inch piece of basic white, and we're going to fold that in half as well. Okay. Now, we're going to, um, just so that people know what's happening, we're going to slice off just a little bit of this front flap, so like a half of an inch. You could even do less if you wanted. Those are centimeters, aren't they? Yeah. Um, so a half of an inch. And the reason is so that you can see that something's happening because this is going to open on the inside of our card in the wrong direction. Okay. So our card is going to be like this and then we're going to have this layer in it. And then that way you see that it needs to be opened. I hope that makes sense. Okay, now I'm not going to adhere anything quite yet. I also am going to take, and I've cut some of this just stunning paper. So if you remember, this is the paper. I think it's called Meandering Meadows. And it's just gorgeous paper. Every sheet is beautiful. And we're going to take and use... Um, this piece which is like the back side so pretty on one side we're going to use the back side um, and I'm going to adhere that so this is five and an eighth by three or I'm sorry five and three eighths by four and an eighth and I'm going to adhere it to the same size piece of basic white now I've got it on basic white because I want it to be a little bit sturdy and you'll see why that is here in just a little bit um, and then we're also going to die cut through three layers, okay? So I'm going to adhere this to the front of my card, and I'm going to put adhesive. Oh, shoot, I didn't want to put adhesive there. Okay, but that's okay, because what I can do is take some, this is the backing off of my uh, mini glue dots. I can cover that up so I can pull it off later. Um what I wanted to do was put adhesive just in the center. You'll see why in just a second. I'm so used to putting adhesive on the top and bottom of strips that 
Duh, Dina. Okay, so I've got that adhered. Now what I want to do is I want to run my die. This is the arch die that comes in this bundle through. And I just am going to tack that down with my post-it. I'm going to run this through um, all three layers. Okay, so let me quick do that. Okay, now I did that and I can kind of see it didn't cut all the way through. So I'm gonna run it through once more. did it a third time and I hope that might have cut through all the layers if not we'll have to run it through separate once more I think that's what's going to happen but the good news is uh, nope the good news is is we know where to cut it now okay so that adhesive because I ran it through so many times is sticking pretty good Okay, so this is free, and then I'm going to just run this through once more. What happens is the die is going to just kind of settle in to the right spot. And I'm going to grab to cover my adhesive. Oh, because I've got adhesive through the center of that. I'll just take this piece again. I don't want it to get all over my plate. Okay. So doing all three layers together did help me make sure that all of them are cut in the same spot. So I'm cool with that. Okay, but I want these two layers separate from these two layers. You'll see in a minute. Well, because we're going to pop it up. Okay. Now, to do that, um, this is a good use of your edge pieces because we're going to kind of go all the way around here. So this sheet, I've used a lot of my edge pieces already. So we'll pull another sheet out. Or you can just do individuals kind of going along here. But um, I like having, the, or the reason I had the white layer on here is to really ensure that things are sturdier. Because if it was just the, um, if it was just the white, or I'm sorry, the DSP, that's kind of a thin layer. And I just wanted to make sure that this would be nice and evenly popped up onto my card because it's going to look nice that way. Okay. Um, now, on the inside of our card, remember we've got this. Oops. <laughs> First off, we want to ensure that it's going to fit in here just fine. And it is. Okay. Then on the inside of this, we're also going to add some stuff. So I cut a piece of this DSP and it is, let me measure it again because I can't remember because <laughs> I cut it like two hours ago. Let's see. It is three and three eighths by uh, three and seven eighths. 
and then I've got a one and a quarter by four inch piece of uh, card of um, cardstock, whatever color this is. Highland Heather. Final answer. And then we'll lay each of these layers on like this. And then, of course, the pattern is all lovely. Like that. Okay, so we're gonna adhere this in. Like that, into our card. And then we're gonna put these three panels on here like this and then when you look at the card you can see them oops they need to be up a little higher because we're also going to add something across the bottom here so we just want to make sure they're kind of up high enough So I'm just going to lightly set these down because I want to make sure Okay, <laughs> just making sure I, my adhesive is okay. I want to make sure that they are up high enough. Yes, they are. Okay, so they're not going to be perfectly centered on the white and that's okay. We just want to make sure that they aren't seen through the um, through the arch. Okay. And then you can see that this kind of helps you understand that this is supposed to open as well. All right. So isn't that beautiful? All right. Now we're going to take and stamp, this is the back side of this actual, the same piece. This is the top part of it, or actually I think it goes like that. Um, but the back side is kind of a sort of wood grainy looking panel. And we're going to stamp on that with this gate stamp. And then we'll die cut it. All right, so I'm going to use, I think I'm going to use some early espresso. I could use black too, but I kind of like the idea of early espresso on here. Okay, and as you may have guessed, the gate is going to go across the bottom here. Okay. Now, the only trick to this gate is that it's not quite wide enough. So I think what I'm gonna do, I was gonna die cut it, but I think what I'm gonna actually do is just adhere it across here, like so. Which I know is not quite the same, but I, I think that's okay. All right. Oh, but what I'm gonna do <laughs> is actually sandwich the gate between the two layers. Sorry, I'm like, wait a minute. All right, so I'm gonna put some adhesive on the two ends here. And I kinda did like half on, half off a little bit, cause Make sure our card opens. Okay, and then of course the back side is just pretty. Okay, and then we want to adhere this. Now I want to give this a good crease again so it kind of stays flat as I'm adding this on top. So 
now the tricky part is pulling off all of these dimensionals. So what I love about this dark archway is I think it's really going to make the inside pop. And then it also allows us oops, to um, hide the ends of that gate so it looks a little bit more natural. All right, now we want to wind this up with the edge. And there we go. Oh, so pretty. Okay, so that is our card. Um, now, on our stamp set, so I've, I'm gonna use, um, I can't imagine having a better friend And then also thinking of you. Oops, that block's not big enough. Okay, so I think I can fit that in here. So it's going to be hidden. And we'll stamp this in some Island Heather ink. And then we'll open this up and we'll do thinking of you on the inside like so all right and I feel like this needs a little something so I'm gonna take and stamp one of these little floral images uh, to kind of add to our one side of our gate And we'll just stamp that on a scrap of paper, of white. Which I thought I had, a scrap of white. Here we go. And maybe I'll stamp that in some early espresso ink to kind of coordinate. And then I'm gonna color this in with my Stampin' Blends. Now I've got some really nice greens in here, and of course we've got the Highland Heather, which I will color our leaves in, Highland Heather, but I think for the green I'm going to go with Granny Apple. Uh, you could also do Fresh Freesia because that will coordinate as well, so whatever, whatever you've got, and I'm just going to kind of do some dots of Highland Heather Dark on here and then I'll kind of go over the rest of it with my light. So I've got lighter and darker areas. And I'm just kind of scribbly over that. And then I'll do my dark granny apple green on the veins of these leaves and on some of those and we'll blend with the light granny apple green for the rest of the, each leaf and a few more we'll fill out that grass a little bit like so all right we've got a die to die cut this so we'll do that And I'm just going to put this on here, like so. Oopsies. I moved it. Come on, Dina. Line her up. There we go. One more pass through. Oh, 
Yes, that is just the perfect touch to this card. Okay, now I'm going to attach it so that it's popped up with two halves of this dimensional. And I'm going to stick those right up against the edge here. Like that. So pretty. Then we've got some of these um, adhesive backed <clears throat> dragonflies and birds and these are really wonderful because they're back in stock. They weren't available that first the first few days. They were out for a week or so, but now they are. Um, so I think I'm going to do two birds. I'm going to do kind of one bird right here and then another bird that kind of faces in the other direction right there. And what a beautiful card. Isn't that fun? So I hope you guys like this one. A little bit of a labor of love with all the steps, but I think it's really quite pretty. Um, I'm sure somebody would uh, love to receive that in the mail. And it's not, you know, it's not too thick um, to, to run through the mail either. I also think maybe a little bit of Stella on our flowers here is warranted. Oh, so fun. And that paper is just so pretty. So there you go. Okay. And you could even put a little strip of paper in here if you wanted um, from the paper. I don't have any cuts, so I'm not going to, but you get the idea. Okay. Now our last card is crazy easy. Um, but I wanted to show you a really cool thing that you can do with this crazy easy card because they're uh, this is a card you could make um, in in bigger quantities quite easily. So I'm going to take um, some of the Winter Meadow DSP and one of the sheets in here um, looks kind of like this. Okay, so it's 12 by 12. And this is just a gorgeous watercolored piece. And if you cut it in half, you're going to have two 6 by 12 inch pieces, which you can then cut into three pieces that are four inches wide. Okay, I think mine is actually a slightly smaller, three and seven eighths inches wide, but you get the idea. So you can make six of these cards I'm about to show you out of one sheet of 12 by 12. So when I cut this down, so again, this is a six inch piece, and then what's left is a five and a quarter plus a three quarter inch that makes six. So this strip right here, we're gonna use on our card. Okay, so like I said, you can get six out of, out of a 12 by 12 sheet of this paper. So here's what we're going to do with that. Um, I've, I'm starting with a thick basic white card base and this just makes a really gorgeous card for Christmas, for winter, for whatever you want it to be. All right, so I've got my half inch of thick paper. Then here is my panel, as mentioned, of that piece, which is three and seven eighths by five and an eighth. And then I'm going to adhere it to a layer of four by five and a quarter black. At least I think that's the size of this. Yes. Sorry, I had to double check. <laughs> okay, now you could leave it like this and just put it on your card on this layer of black and be done and call it good. It's so pretty, but wait, there's more we could do. So I thought it would be even prettier if we added a little layer and um, some ribbon to this. So, sorry, I just had, if, if I caught the edge on this, I would never forgive myself. So I had to cut the little bit of that off my stamp. So I'm going to use Tis the Season, which is from the Brightest Glow stamp set. I think we used this last week on all those wonderful cards we made. And I'm going to take and 
um, that three quarter inch piece, I'm gonna attach to a seven eighths inch piece of black. Seven eighths inch, inch wide by four. Okay, and then that is gonna, if you can stick it on there centered, it's gonna line up just right. <laughs> Sorry, I'm trying to slide it into submission. And I like this just because I think it adds a nice touch. Of course, I'm gonna pop it up like so. Now here's where you can go a couple of different routes and um, ooh, maybe this is where we use our ribbon. You could add um, your ribbon to this. I So I was gonna use um, oh my goodness, I don't see it in my drawer. Oh, well, I was going to use my black and checkered ribbon, <laughs> but I can't find it. Well, I've got this ribbon and I don't like the look of that, so I'm not going to. Um, you could also use some red ribbon on here and we could and so we're going to put ribbon across here and I was thinking we could stamp our sentiment right here below in the coordinating color of our ribbon if that makes sense okay so I would mount this right about there and again that piece is just going to highlight our ribbon and then I can stamp this down here so I'm trying to decide I feel like red would be amazing um Let's see. Okay. I think red would be amazing, but this is, again, something we could do with the berry burst. That would be pretty, too. But you know what? I'm going with red because black and white and red is just so classy, so nice. Final answer. Okay, so I'm just going to adhere this. Actually, I'm not going to adhere it. Um, I'm going to position it here on its wrong side. So that I can stamp this and should something go just horribly wrong we can maybe work with it okay so I'm gonna stamp tis the season right there and then adhere my piece of DSP and then um, ooh well yeah well, actually, I don't need this skinny ribbon. This is from, there's two combo packs. This is from this combo pack. Then there's also the red and green combo pack. I'm going to use this ribbon because I think this is a little wider and it will be a little better for this. I was First, I was thinking skinny, but now I'm thinking. And you can tie this in a bow or a knot, whatever floats your boat. I think I'll do a knot. Not my ribbon scissors. They're on my desk, though, don't worry. Along with three other pairs. <laughs> oh, no, there's only two other pairs. The fourth pair is in my container. <laughs> I'm giggling because oh, my desk. Okay, so I'm just going to tie this knot kind of right over the tis the season. And, oh, I just love the look of that. It's so pretty. And get the ribbon scissors, Tina. It really makes a difference. Oh my gosh, it cuts like butter. Okay, and I love the pop of color. Now, honestly, you could pop it with any color. Pool Party, Lost Lagoon. I'm like looking at my ribbons. Um, we've got Bordering Blue. Uh, we've got Moody Mauve would be beautiful with this. Um... Ooh, uh, this sparkle ribbon would be pretty. I mean, you can really kind of do whatever. Uh, uh, that one I would just do a length across, but lots of different options. Another option would be to combine um, the iridescent ribbon with black baker's twine. That was another option that I had, so in mind. 
So here we go. We're just going to attach this. And then on the inside of our card, we can stamp Merry Christmas from our stamp set. Oh, so pretty. What would azure, azure afternoon look like? Well, we can look. I don't know that I would like that as much, but it, it could work. Um, even that green would be nice with this. Yeah, you could, I mean, you could do it. I don't know. I don't like it as much, but it would work. Um, I'm going to go ahead and say the lemon lolly, not so much. Snow and yellow ribbon, just, they don't go. I'm just saying. <laughs> so there we go. I told you this one would be quick and easy, and it was. So I love that. Get rid of all the scissors now. <laughs> put my uh, I hold my ribbon to the roll with a stick pin I don't know if you guys have ever seen that but I think that's kind of brilliant um, it really helps keep the rolls organized in my drawer all right so there we go so pretty so let me show you our cards today we had this one of course the fancy folded card the happy you warm my heart card and the gorgeous uh, Noel card. So I hope you loved these beautiful cards. I'll get these up on my blog tomorrow. Now a couple of announcements and I, I guess I missed one of the announcements. Um, I have a little, uh, as I mentioned at the beginning, if you were watching, da -da -da -da, I have the 12 Days of Christmas coming up, which is an event that um, is, well, it's through my email. So you can receive um, 12 days worth of tutorials or um, there will be some events. So anyway, but check it out. Um, 12 Days of Projects starting December 1st. So make sure you get subscribed to my email list, um, and in and during those twelve days, though the only way you can get all this good stuff is if you're a subscriber to my email list. So check all that out, um, and all, all of it's free, of course, and just kind of a wonderful opportunity to um, enjoy some projects, both Christmas cards, tags, decor. Um, I think I've got a package also, so lots of different things. Um, and then also, I am going to have a little Black Friday day, so watch for that. Um, the Black Friday special will get emailed out um, on, on Thursday, actually. I think I have the email scheduled, so you don't want to miss that kind of a cool thing. Now, this is just um, a special for, for me. It's not a Stampin' Up! special. It's just a special for me. Um, so you'll want to watch all those details. But yeah, lots and lots of fun. Oh, it looks like somebody is um, here for the first time. Well, we're so excited to have you. Thank you for joining us. Oh my gosh, Kenzie, Thanks for joining in. I'm live every Monday at 5 p.m. Central Time. And yeah, so there you go. All right. So I hope you guys loved our cards. Thank you for being here. If you could give me the thumbs up, that would just rock my world. Don't forget to subscribe to my channel. That makes a difference too. The YouTube loves it when I do that. Um, or when you do that, I should say. And uh, thanks again for being here. And uh, if you would like a first we turkey, then we stamp camp, drop me a line. I can send you the registration. It will be a fun event. Have a great Thanksgiving, my friends. I love stamping with you. I am so grateful for you. And I hope that you all have a wonderful um, Thanksgiving.
Thanksgiving if you are, of course, are here in the U.S. And for those of you abroad, have a great Thursday. We will see you all back here next Monday. Have a great day, guys. Bye-bye.